And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 9th of August 2013. Warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk. Actually, if you're with us live, um, then uh, you might have noticed at the top it said the 8th of August. I've just realised I put 8th of August on the little um, uh, text text thing that's uh, kind of above you know, b before we start there. So sorry about that, boys and girls. Yes, a little, little, little text, a text mishap this morning already, even before we start. Unbelievable. You are with us live. It's 10, just gone 10.30 on Friday, the 9th of August, 2013. And I need help this morning, boys and girls. Well, I need help all the time, to be honest. Professional help. Professional help to, to, to help my sad, lonely, pathetic life. I really do. What I need help with is my sister's birthday is coming up soon. And I need assistance with, I don't know what to get her. I have no idea what to get my sister for her birthday this year. Have you got any suggestions at all? I think she's 40... 46, I think. What can I get... A 46-year-old woman with three grown-up children. Well, two grown-up and one nearly grown-up. The other one's 16. Jim is 16. Gary's uh, uh, 20, 28. Tracy's 25. And Gary and his wife have two children. So she's got two, three grandchildren altogether. And Tracy, my niece, has got one child. So that's three grandchildren altogether. What do you get a woman with all those things? Now, let me, a little bit of background. My sister is one of the most hard-working people I know. Not only does she do her job, like when she's out doing her job, you know, she does that, caring for elderly people. I mean, I'm not far, not far off being cared for myself, I don't think, to be honest. But there we are. Yeah, she does, she does caring for um, elderly people. Is there anything that you can suggest that I could purchase her for her birthday? I would be I would be most grateful if you could send your suggestions in, perhaps on the email with this one, okay? Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Suggestions what I could send for my sister's um <coughs> email uh, 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 birthday. Any idea at all? Because I haven't got a clue. Uh, I've already bought her over a little period of time. I, she's got a couple of bags, so she's needed bags. Uh, oh, do you know, I've just, I've cut myself shaving, haven't I? Look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm bleeding to death in front of you. I'm bleeding to death, boys and girls, look. Oh, my God, it's right on my Adam's apple, look. I'm a, is, that, is that still coming through? Look, it's still coming through, look. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Oh, my God, I've had my throat slashed by the Taliban. Oh, 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 God, I'm bleeding to death here. That teaches me to buy cheap razors, doesn't it? <laughs> you see, because I get my razors from, uh, I get them from Audi now. I'm not going and buying, like, ten quid. Ten quid for four blooming razors. And actually, I've got to say, apart from that cut there, I know it sounds a bit mad, but I find the Audi, and I'm going to go and get it, just a minute. Oh, just a minute. Just a minute. <clears throat> so here, in my hand, those of you with no vision, there's plenty of people that just listen to the show. Uh, in my hand, I have my Audi Razor, which is quite all right. And it, and it moves, you know, it's not like one of those ones that... Uh, like the throwaway ones, like the big ones, completely useless. I've had something like cut, cuts all over your face with a big razor. Now this one moves, the head moves, like with the contours of your face. It moves, moves backwards and forwards, and uh, you get blades with it. And it, they're very, they're actually very cheap, very cheap. And I've got to say, this cuts closer. Hang on, I'm not, I'm really not ready this morning, am I? This actually cuts closer than my uh, Gillette trip, was it a five razor blade thing? 
Okay, which I have in my bag. I usually use that one in a swimming pool. This one I keep at home. This cuts closer than that. I've got much smoother shave when I use it, but a little nick in my neck where I am, I'm practically bleeding to death in front of you this morning, boys and girls. I am absolutely ble bleeding to death. So that's, that's my razor. And they're really cheap. I can't remember exactly how much this was, but I think it was about a quarter the price of the uh, Gillette Wilkinson one, whatever that is. And, you know, I mean, I saw some, I saw this packet of razor blades the other day, which was 20 quid in Sainsbury's. One of the Mac Turbo or some stupid name like that. So, I don't know, do you use cheap razors, chaps? Or do you, or do you just go and spend the money? It does say... <clears throat> on one of those Gillette or Wilkinson ones that their razors lost a, last a very long time. To be honest, I haven't found it. I don't know if it's the way I'm shaving or what, but these ones do the job very well. Um, after a while, they do start cutting your face, and that, that's when it's time to change your razor, you know. I mean, don't walk around with too many cuts on your face. They will think you're, you know, they, th they think you're into self-harming. I might do some self-harming later on, on, on the show. Would you like that? So that's sort of a, you know, an, 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 an additional benefit to watching this morning? I don't know. Uh, so there we are. Help with Sharon's uh, birthday present. This week, I have bought some new inks for my printer. Jesus Christ, how much do they cost? Have you seen the price of it? Look, I bought these two. These two Epsom inks. And you get four cartridges in there, because they're different colours and all that business, right? Four cartridges in there. For two of these, £63. It's cheaper to buy champagne than it is computer inks. I don't know how they get away with it. To be honest, I don't know how um, we ever allowed ourselves to be charged so much for inks. You know, because uh, at the end of the day, I think if stuff doesn't sell then they bring the price down. I've noticed this with the... Li they, Linda McCartney do this little pot thing now. Pot, um... Uh, like, vegetarian sausages, or what's the other one? Lentil cottage pie in, in this little pot. Uh, it was really, I think it was about £3.50 at one point. No one was buying it. They were all on a show. Uh, wait till the reduced two comes the day before, and then you could get it for, like, £2. I, I'm prepared to pay £2 for it. That's come down to £2.60, because I don't think anyone was buying it. You know, if we all stopped buying this ridiculously overcharged um, computer printer ink, then they would bring the prices down. I'm sure they would. One thing I will say, I know you can buy the refills and the compatible ones. Do you know what I mean? You know when you go on the internet and you look for the original Epsom uh, uh, printer inks? And you always find next to it somewhere, it'll say um, uh, compatible inks. And they are, they're not, they're not exactly half price, but they are three or four pounds cheaper. Now, I've tried that a couple of times not on these two printers that i've got in now because i've got a a, 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 a um what's it one a brother that's a black and white one that takes great big cartridges right and most 99 percent of the time 99 and a half percent of the time that is the one i use okay because i print out my quiz questions for the quiz night i do on Tuesdays, if you ever want to join us, I do a quiz night at the uh, the Mayflower every Tuesday night at half past eight, Mayflower in Rotherhithe. And uh, also the, the request sheets for karaoke, they all get printed on the Brother machine. And those big, um, oh, there's one up there, one minute, one minute, one minute. Oh, it's right at the top there. Let's stretch that down. <clears throat> right, so you get these great big toner cartridge things. OK, they're about oh, they're about 50 quid, so not cheap again, but they do last a very long time. So most of my stuff is printed on the black and white. The colour ones I occasionally use really only to print out the very, very occasional photograph. Because I find it's easier if you put your photographs on, on like a memory stick and take it down to Boots the Chemist. You plug it in this machine. Push a few buttons and your and your photos come out. And that's that's relatively cheap. I think it works out to about forty or fifty pence per photograph. 
if you print them out yourself on an A4, then you're using a lot of ink, you see. Also, I use the colour inks for if I'm doing a picture round at the quiz night and it requires colour photos, then I use it for that as well. But they're the only, only two times I use those. Now, I have tried in the past on two separate printers... I've tried using compatible printer cartridges, and in both cases, they've damaged the printer. I think in both cases, what's happened is that they've actually blocked up the print head. And then, of course, you ring up the people and they say, oh, no, 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 no. oh it's not working properly. OK, could you just read? And then they, they're very clever. They, they, they say, oh, could you just read us the code on the, uh, on the cartridge? And you read this, go, oh, it's not one of ours. I'm sorry, we can't help you. And that's it, they cut you off. <laughs> well, they don't put the phone down, but, they, you know, they're not interested. Once, once they know you've bought some other printer ink, they are not interested. And I have mucked up two printers using compatible, uh, print, uh, compatible cartridges. So I'm afraid I will have to advise not to use those to anyone. Don't, don't ever buy those compatible cartridges. Two printers thrown away because of that. Ever since I've used the ones as made or recommended by the computer manuf uh, by the printer manufacturers i've never had that problem so interesting there i don't know have you ever used compatible printer cartridges and have you ever damaged your printer or did it work okay do let us know the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk it is expensive I try my best not to use the colour printer at any time because of the expense of the printing. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous because of the expense of the ink. But now and again, I have to print stuff, so I've bought those two. Have you ever used compatible printer cartridges or do you two stick with the, with the um, ones recommended um, by the uh, uh, printer makers, manufacturers? Let us know, Chris, at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Good morning to uh, David on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, David, who sends in a live Skype message this morning. He says, good morning, Chris, from the sunny Isle of Wight. Good morning, David. Nice to see your little face popping up, sir. It says, we have the red arrows doing a display over cows on the Isle of Wight. And tonight, we have the biggest firework display on the south coast at Cows for Cows Week. Why is it called Cows? I mean, is this, is this a, a sort of flashback to the past? Whether, whatever ever, I suppose there were at some point cows roaming free on the Isle of Wight, was there? Have you got any cows yourself? Do they allow you to keep cows in the garden, David? <laughs> do you do your own milking? Or well, don't start me on about the dairy industry. Uh, again, that's one of those cruelty to animal things. They're not all like, you know, patted. Don't think all these cows are treated nicely, you know. I'm sure some of them are. But I'm, I'm into all that animal liberation stuff, aren't I? You know, just have a little type into to YouTube and put, look, t type in cow cru cruelty or anything like that. Yeah, but actually you'll probably see me, me come up being beaten up, wouldn't you? If you type in cow cruelty. So that's the, uh, I've had a couple of me meals out this week. Interestingly enough, at the same chain of in, uh, of restaurants, two completely different experiences. The first time I went, I went with my mate Ron and his other half, uh, Andy, and we went to the Toby Carvery in Frimley, a place where we've been a few times before, usually me and Ron, but this time his other half comes, comes as well. Now, his other half is a little bit... How can I put this? Um, he doesn't like what he would call common restaurants. So he, I don't think he was too keen on going in the first place. Anyway, so he sits down and orders a bowl of soup. Oh, first of all, no, um, let me get to, the, let me get, get to the beginning of the story. So we, first of all, all these diversions were in place. So th this, this journey, which should have taken about 20 minutes, ended up taking 35 minutes. We're driving round and round. Of course, the two of them, I'm in the back of this car. Because Ron's got one of those flash BMWs, you know, with a fold-down roof and all that business. And if you sit in the back, oh my God, it's just so uncomfortable. I hate it. I hate sitting in the back of the car, you know. But there's him, there's his other half, so, you know, I've got to go in the back. <laughs> 
poor old soul got to go in the back. So you're sitting in that car, uncomfortable. And then when it comes to getting out, I just, I just can't get out of the bloody car. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I'm absolutely serious. I can't get out of the car. So they move this chair forward. Well, number one, the, the chair, uh, the, the chairs don't move far enough forward for you to be able to get two legs out the bloody back of the car. I, I hate this car. Absolutely hate it. And you, 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 you get one leg out, or out of this and you're pushing this leg out and it doesn't get to the road. So you've got the edge of the car there and the road is there and your foot is hanging here desperately, tr <laughs> desperately trying to push, to push out so that it will actually touch, but it doesn't touch the floor because I've got little legs and I can't get out. And what they have to do, Ron and his other arm, they have to grab my arm and try and drag me out of this car. I mean, I feel like one of them women that used to get dragged around in the caveman days by their hair. Except I have no hair to pull. In fact, it's getting even worse now in the middle, I think. Oh, it's not too bad today. So that, that would, that, and I hate, I really, really hate that car so much. It looks nice, but I'm afraid looks aren't everything. As you well know, if looks for everything, I would never have got anywhere, to be honest. Would I? Be honest. Maybe a few years ago. Not now. You know, we accept that. We accept that there are a few lines now. Thank God this programme isn't recorded in high definition. Christ, there wouldn't be anyone watching now. There's few enough viewers and listeners as it is. High definition, that would kill it off stone dead, I'm sure it would. Absolutely kill it off stone dead. Anyway, so they've dragged me out of this car, and then, then because my feet are still not, not right, you know, it's going to take a while because I've got trouble with my feet at the moment as well. Oh, God, it just goes on and on. They are, I think they're getting better slowly. They feel a bit better now than they have been, so that's that. Um, so we went into this roster. First of all, we stood. This is the Toby, Car let me, uh, Toby Carvery in Frimley. Remember that if you ever want to go. This is my experience. It's all, it's all quite legal for me to tell you this. You know, there's no malice in it. I'm just telling you an experience. No one can take me to court and say, oh, you can't say that about us. Yes, I bloody well can, because it worked, because this is what happened. Got to the, got to the front desk, and we looked over, and by now it was actually a little bit late. You know, it was about a quarter past two now. So quite late. We looked in, and uh, sure enough, there wasn't many people there now. Most of the people had had their lunch and gone. There were quite a few empty tables. Anyway... So this waiter came over, um, not very old, I suppose about 24, 25 he was, um, and a little bit overweight, and uh, he says, yes sir, so we'll have a table for three please, okay sir, so he took us straight to this table, uh, there you go sir, oh, can we sit over there, we pointed this table that was next to the window, but it was a much larger table, it was like for six or eight people, I can't remember how many now. And um, he says, oh, no, I'm sorry, we have to keep that open in case six people turn up. And I thought to myself, what, at quarter past two? You know, quarter past two, already you could see it was emptying out. You know, people were going, they've had their lunch now. And that wasn't the only six or eight person table there. You see? There were lots of, there was a few of these tables. Now, you can't sit over there, and that's for six. Anyway, I looked at Ron, and I was like, oh, right, OK, then. Uh, so I sat down... <clears throat> And then out comes these menus. Um, none of us said anything, which is unusual, really. Usually, something like that, I would have either said something, I said, well, we want to sit over there, or we're going. Or, I would have just said, okay, okay, forget it, and walked out. But I was with those other two, so I thought, oh, you know, better keep the peace. Better keep the peace. Although we wanted to sit by the... I like sitting by the window in a restaurant, you know, and watching the world go down. Don't you? I don't like sitting somewhere where it's all enclosed. It's a bit like, you know, you go in people's houses and their bathrooms, certainly in flats and that, and they've got no windows. Oh, I would hate that. Oh, no. No, I don't like being all enclosed. I don't know what it's going to be like when I end up in a coffin. I really don't. I had a couple of windows there, perhaps. Well, I could go in one of those mausoleums, couldn't I, where, you just, where, they, just, uh, where they just push you onto a shelf. I mean, that would be quite nice. Would it? Eh? <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be in a box with no windows. Anyway. So the waiter says, 
um, would you like to order now? I said, oh, well, give us a couple of minutes. Off he goes. And then, so I'm thinking, well, we'll, we'll have the carveries over there. Uh, I, I have a carvery with no meat, so I just go and have the, the potato. Oh, the lovely, oh, delicious roast potatoes in Toby Carvery. They all were, I don't know how they do them. Must be a special way of doing them. Roast potatoes, and um, they had uh, runner beans, um, carrots, stuffings, quite nice, bread bread stuffing. Uh, you, you can have a Yorkshire pudding. And I have everything except the meat. And that, oh, by the way, that is a little bit cheaper as well. Not that that made any difference to me. I think it's about pound fifty cheaper if you don't have the meat or something like that. Um, so Ron was going to have the same. And then the boyfriend trumps up and he says, uh, oh, I just have soup. And I thought, what do you mean you're just... As I say, I didn't say anything. And I thought, what do you mean you, you'll just have soup? I thought to myself. We've come all this way, you know, to come out for a dinner. And you sit there and you just want soup. I thought, I thought it was a bit rude, to be honest. Would you, would you think that was rude or not? And Ron is a, is a little bit, you know, with, with the boyfriend, is a little. He, he kind of tiptoes, I've noticed he tiptoes around him a little bit. Oh, are you sure you don't want soup, baby? And all this business. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so he orders soup, uh, and he says, oh, can you tell me what the soup is, please? And the bloke says, tomato soup. Oh, I said, oh, I'll have some of that as well, then. And then Ron had some as well. So we all had tomato soup, which was very nice indeed. Very nice. OK? The waiter, it just looks miserable. Now, I know they're probably all on minimum wage, they work long hours, and it's hot and all that. Just a minute now. Oh, we got a phone num phone call already. Just a minute. Who's on the phone now? Oh. I don't think we're bothered with that one then, because it's just phone phone music coming down. That was strange, wasn't it? We just, I can't it. Why can't I hear anything on my little phone? Today? Oh, there we are. Hang on, we've got to turn that off. So, well, no. If you want to talk to us, that's fine. Give us a call in, boys and girls. We have Skype. Skype username is all one word. Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. There's a phone number as well. 020 8153 6358. 020 8153 6358. So, uh, the soup came and that was all very nice. And as I say, you know, miserable as sin this waiter. But if you don't want to do the job, don't do it. You know, don't walk around with your customers miserable. I had already, as, uh, at the point where we were refused the table that we wanted, I'd already made up my mind, right, mate, you ain't getting no tip. Now, as it happens, for good service, I'm a fairly good tipper. So if there were three of us in there, and the bill would have come to about 30 quid, I would have given him a fiver. But seriously, I would have given him a fiver. As it happened, which would have doubled his hour. You know? So if he gets like £6 an hour or something like that, and it, and it really is as low as that, I'm afraid. I'm sorry if you're a waiter, waitress. I feel for you. I really do. You know, it's not, it's not very pleasant to be paid such a low amount. But my fiver would have doubled that hourly wage. But because you were so bloody rude, no, not rude, but because you didn't give us what we wanted and you looked as miserable as sin, you got... Nothing. I've decided, as soon as he refused that table, well, you're not going to get a tip, mate. That's it. So we had this soup. And then I thought, oh, well, he'll have something to eat now. This is, this is his boyfriend. And um, I said, well, we'll go out for a carvery. I said, you're coming up then? No, I don't want anything else. Oh, right, OK. And I, I don't know. I just, I just thought, well, why did, why did you come if you're not going to eat anything? He's a nice boy, don't get me wrong, but I, ju I just feel, you know, I wouldn't have gone. If I wasn't hungry, I just wouldn't have gone. You just sit there with nothing while well, two people eat dinner. And then, so I goes and gets my dinner. And when I go to carve it, I've got to tell you, I have a rather large dinner. You know, the, the plate is piled up quite high. Oh, but it's all vegetables, quite a lot of potatoes as well. I have the, um, I have the, um, uh, the... The roast potatoes 
and the mashed potatoes as well. Really nice. So I had all that. And Ron says, are you coming up then? He said, no, I don't want anything. All oh, right. So Ron goes over and he comes back. Now, when me and Ron go, he has the same size portion as me, but it was about half the size. And I thought, oh, my God. And I thought, he's doing all this, you know, to look good in front of the boyfriend. It's all panning around him all the time. Pathetic. Um, so he did that. And uh, we're on a little bit of a chat and that. And it was all, like, quite pleasant, really. Quite nice. And I finished the dinner. And then we had this, this, this ice cream thing, which was really nice. So I had that as well, and Ron, Ron, oh, no, oh no, I don't want, oh no, I don't want one, I don't want one. So I ordered him one anyway, and he ate it. It's like ice cream with honeycomb and chocolate in, and and that was it. Come to about thirty quid. It's, it's not expensive in Toby Carvery for you get really decent sized dinners for a very good price. So I paid the bill, and that was it. I didn't pay any more than that. Oh no, was it Ron? No, Ron paid the bill. He paid the bill this time. He paid it. Um, Richard said, he's not allowed to put you on that table, though. What, the table of six, if there's only three of us? Well, fine, next time we'll walk out, Richard. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Next time, we won't go. Business lost. End of story. Whew, there's another phone call. Let's see if it's some idiot playing music again or someone who actually wants to talk to us. Good morning. Who's on the line? <laughs> No, someone who wants to play music. OK, so we'll ignore that now. We always get someone who, idiot who plays music that. No, I won't. Uh, oh, that's fine, you know. Usually there's only two of us and we're sit, But we don't like to sit in the middle of the restaurant. We like to sit away from it, under the windows and all that. So there we are. So we had our meal and uh, I struggled back to get into the car. I think, he let, I think Ron got in the back this time. And I sat in the front with Andy. And, oh, I didn't like his driving, dear. Oh, God, no. He's on and off that bloody accelerator and pedal all the time. Must beat cars away from lights. Must beat cars when going around the tr round the roundabout. It's a young man thing, isn't it? Because he's only 25, I suppose. That's what it is. Isn't it? Now, don't get me wrong here. Not slagging anyone off at all. I was telling you the experience that I had Tuesday. So I got back and I thought, oh, there's no way I'm getting into a car with him again driving. No, thank you. Just too fast. Too fast and... Uh, I, I know it's a powerful car because it's not one of those Audi th uh, BMW things. But still, you know, no need to drive at the speed of light everywhere. It's just, just, just frightening. So that was my experience Tuesday. On Thursday, I went, uh, I met up with my friend Justin. Now, he runs a pub that I worked in many years ago called the Steamcoach in Elmore Hempstead. And we went to another Toby Carvery. Uh, this one in... Oh, God, where is it now? It, it's, it's very... It's a new one. And it's part of... A, there's a kind of a hotel above it. I can't think where it is now. Uh, well, it's near Hemel Hempstead. Very near Hemel Hempstead. So we went to this one. I met my friend Justin and we drove there. And I drove this time. And I'm, I'm not a mad driver. You know, I, I, I stick to the speed limits and on the motorway I only do 60 mile an hour. I, I just don't find it necessary to put my foot down everywhere. And I get really good fuel economy as well. So I picked him up and we went to the Toby Carvery near Hemel Hempstead. Kind of, you, you come through Hemel and you go, go up towards the M1 and it's on the left somewhere. And uh, we were met immediately by uh, a young man who took us straight to a table is this table all right, sir? And we, he sat us at a, a table for four. There were only two of us. So I'm not sure if you're right there, Richard, right? If there were three of us and he wouldn't let us sit on a six table, the, the other one I went to, there were four of us and, and there were two of us and he sat us on a four table. So I'm not sure you're right there, Richard. I think it just depends. Depends on who's serving you. So we got there about, again, about two o'clock. So maybe quite late for lunch it had already emptied out i had exactly the same as i had at the other place but a completely different experience you know my friend justin and me we had roughly the same side great big dinners you know massive he has the the carvery i just have the vegetables and we had the ice cream to finish with and all very nice and the waiter was nice and we gave him a little tip but i think it was about five quid from two of us which is quite good you know, he appreciated that. He was reasonably happy. He came over a couple of times to see if there was everything all right. Which, I mean, I don't mind that just once or twice. It's when they keep coming over and bloody well pestering you. 
You know, they're good at that in TGI Fridays, somewhere I haven't been for years. But I always remember going, whenever I went into TJ Friday, TG, TGI Fridays, every few minutes, they were, everything all right? Everything, and happy, happy, smiley, will you go away, dear? We're, t- <laughs> we're trying to have our dinner. Piss off. Oh, they do get on my nerves. Go away. I've also been lucky enough to go uh, for afternoon tea a couple of times to a really posh place in London, Fortnum and Masons. Now, if you go there for tea, you can't just go in a T-shirt and shorts. You know, you've got to put something nice on. I think I went in a jacket and, and pair of trousers on both occasions. And there were different people's birthdays. Once was Wayne's and once was Ronnie's. And I took Ronnie up there once and I took Wayne up there once. And that's different altogether. And you sit and you, you go to the desk. Oh, hello, sir. Very posh. And they take you to the table and all this business. And the waiter comes over takes your order, goes away, brings it back, and then he disappears and goes and stands right at the back of the dining area and waits to be called. He doesn't come over every five minutes. Everything all right? Ha, ha, ha. Smiley, smiley, smiley. No. He stands at the side of the room and waits to be called. And I like that. I like that. And if you want something, you just just put your hand up. Yes, sir. And he comes straight over. Yes, sir. Very nice. Properly trained, you know. And when you're paying for that experience, surely that's what you should expect, isn't it? Not some miserable git coming round being miserable or someone coming round being happy, happy, happy. That sounds a little bit, you know, one against the other, doesn't it? But you you, you know, you, you get the general idea, don't you? And again, you know, very expensive to eat somewhere like that. But you have to remember the waiters will be on very low wages. So again... Uh, in the afternoon tea, Fortnum and Masons, you give them a reasonable tip, whatever you think is is, is suitable. And we, indeed I did. So different experiences there altogether. I wonder if uh, you've got any good or bad experiences at restaurants that you want to share with us? Then send us in an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, talking about this. Or you can in join in live if you are with us live. OK, so have a look at your clock. If it's Friday, August the 9th, 2013, and it's just gone 11 o'clock in the morning, then indeed you are with us live and you can join in live. Either by Skype. My Skype username is Chris Reardon. OK, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or... Oh, now, just a second. I was hoping to talk to David and now I can't get him. Uh, he, he sent in a message saying, do you want to chat? And now, I don't have your Skype thing there, David. Where's that gone? Perhaps you've disappeared, have you? One minute, where is it? David, no, he's not there now. Well, we might have to, um... David, your Skype is offline at the moment. I don't know if you're aware of that, so I can't call you now. Uh, yes, you can Skype in. Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or by phone, 020-8133-6358, OK? 020-8133-6358. They're the two methods that you can use at the moment to join in live. Uh, A couple of messages coming in here. Good morning to Wendy, who says, what have you done to your neck? Oh, well, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a cut there, I'm afraid, on my neck. A little bit of a cut there. Uh, Sean says, we have a Toby Carvery coming soon to Ipswich. Oh, you'll love it, Sean. You'll be in there all the time. We love the Toby Carveries. Uh, Sean says, are you a nervous passenger? Do you pretend you have a break in the passenger side? No. <laughs> but I don't like people who drive too fast. My sister's the same. Tearing around the roads of, um, of Woodall Spa, where she lives. She's got flashed once by camera. Serves her right. I'm sorry. Serves her right. <laughs> uh, OK, David's on the phone now. Good morning, David. Good morning, Chris. Morning, sir. Do you like my new red phone? Have you seen my new red phone, David? I have, but I can't see it at the moment. Oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful. My niece actually bought this for Christmas, and you can act- you can plug it in to your iPhone. Right. Uh, which, is, which is rather cool, I think. I think I've got a volume thing here. Just count from 1 to 10, and I'll see if this works. For me. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, it does. Five. How marvellous. Cool. 
I can turn you up. I can turn you up and down on on a little little um little wheel on the side of this phone. Did you hear that? What did I hear? What? Morning, Chris. Oh, good morning. Is that our young lady, Angel? Yes. Angel cakes. We've got once again. We've got the whole. Of, we've got the whole of the. Who's that? That's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> I've been the nanny yesterday. Yeah. yeah, I need yeah. my dinner. How old are you now, Charlie? How old are you now? I'm three. Three years old. Wow. I remember when your mum and dad uh, uh, rung me and told me you just you just come out. You're just born. Yeah. And Harry's coming. Hey? Harry. Harry? Who's Harry? Harry's got his it's, toy. His little brother. Oh, this is, this is your new one, is it? And how old is this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's got, she's got about, uh, she's got about a month to go. Oh, okay, right. Oh, he's on his yeah. way. Well, I've already got another nephew called Harry. You have? Yeah. Yeah, my niece's, uh, my niece's little, little boy. It's cool, isn't it? Uh, sorry, my, 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 um, niece-in-law's little boy, my, my, my nephew's wife. Would that be a niece-in-law? I suppose it would, wouldn't it? I would have thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a while since I heard your little voices. Mm, been a couple of weeks. Where you been? <laughs> a couple of weeks? It's been a lot more than that, my friend. Been too busy up and down the hospital. Oh, you poor old souls. Yeah. But How'd they, you get there then? Is there a bus or you got a... Have you got a car? You don't know now. And we fly. You fly? We fly, yeah. <laughs> We got a helicopter in the garden or something like that. Oh, have you? I wish. Oh, oh, I'd wish. Love. Wouldn't that be great to have your <laughs> own helicopter, or, helicopter or, or your own jet? In the garden. You know, I could yeah. go and visit my sister in like in forty minutes. You would just fly over there. That would be fantastic. It's Never happened, of course. But no. Um, well, I don't know. We might win a load of money cows. somehow. I don't know why it's called cows. Yeah, why is it called cows? I have no idea. Were there a lot of cows on the island at some point? Don't know, probably. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah, but, but we're having, at the moment, because we've got all the holiday makers yeah. over and that, yeah? Yeah. The council has decided to, because they've got this thing called a PFI, which is, uh, they've got money from the government to do every single road up on the Isle of Wight. Oh, really? Words. You know, now I, I've got a, I've got a. It, it, it does make me wonder sometimes. Now, presumably, yeah. as a resident there, you will know there are roads and pavements there yeah. that don't need to be touched. Would I be right in saying that? Uh, no. Are <laughs> you telling me every road is is damaged? Uh, well, yes. Well, yes. I, I, I've noticed, I've noticed sometimes, you know, they seem to replace, certainly uh, over here on the mainland, sometimes they seem to replace pavements yeah. that appear not to be damaged. And what I think it is, I think the councils get so much money. And yeah. when they come to the end of the year, if they've got all this money left over, they think, yeah. oh, my God, what, you know, we need to spend this. Because mm. their accounts, if they don't spend the money, say they were given, like, I don't know, I don't know what, 20 million pounds to spend. Yeah. If they only spend 15 million, then the accountants look, you know, and look at, oh, hang on a minute, they only spent 15 million. Right, you can only have 15 million from this time. Yeah. And that's what I think happens. They, they have a glut of money at the end, and they have to spend it on something. I always remember the swimming pool getting done up near where I lived. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And they put new windows and this, that and the other in there. And, you know, you, you kind of thought, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Covers on the pool and everything. Anyway, carry on. Carry on, David. Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is, yeah, because they've awarded the contract to a mainland firm. Right. right? And they want to build that. They call the, they don't call the road surface tarmac anymore. They call it asphalt. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Same stuff. But, Same yeah. stuff, different name, or is it? I don't know. Asphalt um, is... Um, asphalt is... What? Asphalt is... Yeah. I'm a pig. Yeah, you don't know what it is. Anyway, um, what they've done... Yeah. ...awarded this contract to them, and the first bit of road they've done... 
they got it wrong. They put it down wrong because they had no idea how to lay it. Oh, my God. Um, and what happened? Was it, was it all the stones going all over the place by any chance? And then um, last week, they'd done another little little side road. Yes. And um, there was a van parked. Everybody, everybody moved everything. Hang on, I've just got to do this. Hang on. Hang on. Can you, can you turn the baby off for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'd love> to. <laughs> turn it off for a minute. Um, <laughs> um, this road, everybody yeah. moved their cars except one van. So you'd think they would stop doing the, re- you know, the road. Yeah. They put this new asphalt down and went round it. They did what? They went round it. So there's. Where where this vehicle is, yes. underneath there's a patch. All the rest of the road's done. How stupid can you be? Right. Also, also get this. We're having new LED streetlights. Oh yes, I've seen those. Yes, uh, go on. Yeah, yeah. The ones we're getting, um, where where the old ones, they put a really nice beam down, don't they? Yeah. Yes. So you can see where you're going. These ones only light up. Um, where they like um, where the lights are shining down, that's all they light up. Next to it is dark. Then you got the next street light, dark. Next street light, dark. So I'm thinking that's going to be, you know, it's going to be. Um, well, they're obviously to doing that to um, to save uh, money on the electricity. Yeah. Because let me tell you, I mean, recently I changed all the lights in my house to LED ones, except the ones I use to make the show. In front of me here are three normal electric bulbs. Uh, I say normal ones, you know, like the halogen ones. Not, not energy ones, are they? No, no, they're, they're, they're no. halogen ones. There's one directly in front of me, one on the left and one on the right. You know, if I was to turn mm-hmm. one off, you know, you would soon notice uh, we go sort of dim. Even dimmer than I am usually. Do you know what mm. I mean? Um, well, you're not rest- that dim. You're quite bright, actually. <laughs> the, re- the rest of the... D- I'm, not, I'm not bright at all. <laughs> I have to tell you that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm pretty unintelligent, to be honest. Um, what? Oh, you come from Bracknell. So oh, you know, please. Bread, you? <laughs> uh, and so I changed all the bulbs in my house to LED ones, actually only, yeah. uh, only a few weeks ago, uh, because they only use three watts. Three watts of electricity. You can leave them all on all night long and the meter meter barely moves. So that's Mm. why they've done that. Now, I have seen there is a particular street I drove down actually on a Friday night um, Mm. where they've installed these LED lights. And I I don't, I actually don't think they're that bad. Um, Mm. The light from them is certainly white instead of orange. Yeah. Um, and it, it is kind of more of a natural light, I think, than, than the yeah. orange glow of the um, sodium lamps. And, of course, they use barely any electricity in comparison to the other ones. So that's why they've done it. Mm. Yeah, we're, we're having them all done. Every single street yeah. light on the island's being done. Right. And every well, single road. And no. <laughs> What's the name of the company that's that's putting the, the roads down? Do you know? Uh, it's found? called Island Roads. Island Roads. No, I've never heard of them. Um, it's a it's a new company. Never heard of them. Uh, well, we had a company. Um, that there's 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 a main road out of Bracknell to the M3. Okay, there's only one road. It's a dual carriageway, very busy road. Uh, traffic jams during the two rush hours. Okay, and about a year, year and a half ago, no longer than that now, a year and a half, two years ago, they decided to resurface that, and it went wrong. Oh dear. So they closed the road all night long. They put down the uh, tar... What's that sort yeah. of? Afs, afs, asphalt. Yeah, the asphalt stuff. And on top, they put these chippings, don't they? You know, yeah. you know these little stones. So they left it, and then they opened the road. Well, the stones didn't it's stick. stick. <laughs> there were stones everywhere. People were getting their cars, you know, chippings on their paintwork and all that. These stones were flying everywhere. So they closed the road again. <laughs> they closed the road again, and then they sent sweepers up and down it to collect all the stones again. Oh, cool. Right? So they so they'd done that, and then as as time was going on, all these stones were still coming up Yeah. from this road. So they had to close it again... 
and redo the whole thing again. Don't know why it didn't work. We never really found out why. But you see, years ago, because I don't remember seeing a steamroller, to be honest. Years ago, they put this stuff down, and then you'd get this steamroller going off it, wouldn't it? Yeah. So presumably, this would push the, the stones down into the asphalt. Whether or not they don't bother with the steamroller on there or, or, or not, I don't know. But um, the, the, the company, of course, as always, blamed it on the weather. Blimmin' oh, idiots. Oh. Idiots. My mate, uh, the, you know, because he had his BMW, he got some chips out of that, and he rung them up, and they paid. They paid for it, and it was like a few hundred quid. Oh. A few hundred quid to get his um, car sprayed again, where the chips had been done by these little stones. Oh, but yeah, he got it chip. done. I don't know. Oh, you see, p the thing is, most people wouldn't bother. They, they, they oh, can't be bothered, and they just leave it, uh. wouldn't they? Would have been a lot easier if they just chipped the whole car. It'd be look better, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Listen, here, someone, someone's written in. Richard's written in. Thank you, Richard in Croydon, who writes um, about cows. Yeah. The name. Here you go. He says the name West Cow was attested. What's that mean? Attested? Do you know? No, I do. No. That's a long word, Richard, for us unintelligent people. Was sure. attested in 1413 as the name of one of two sandbanks on each side of the river Medina Estuary. Right. Is, that, is that a river there, is it? Yeah. So yeah. called after a supposedly likeness to cows. Does the river look like a cow, then? No, no. How, it's can, just a river, like a how can a river <laughs> look like a cow? <laughs> 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 the name was subsequently transferred to fortifications built during the reign of King Henry VIII on the uh, east and west banks of the river to dispel a French invasion, referred to as cowfoots or cows. They subsequently gave their names to the towns of Cows and East Cows, replacing uh, the earlier name of Shamblord. So it used to be called Shamblord. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. The town's name has been subject to dispute in the past, sometimes being called cows and then west cows. For example, yep. a milestone from the 17th century exists calling the town cows. But up to until the late 19th century, the Urban District Council bore the name of west cows. Yep. 1895 saw the last major point where the town was called west cows when west cows Urban District Council applied for permission to change the name of the cows to uh, town to cows officially and this was granted on the 21st of august 1895 so not that long ago really wow. the name <laughs> west, the name west cows is used rarely today with a notable exception of red funnel the ferry yeah. provider that provides routes from southampton to both cows and east cows yeah. uh, which for reasons of clarity has promoted its ongoing use so there we are thank you for that richard ah. it's nice to have people full of information here now, the funny thing is chris yeah <clears throat> Yeah. Many years ago, people from cows didn't like people from East Cows. Well, what was that then? I don't know. It was just the area, I suppose. It's like yeah. where I am now. I'm in a, I'm in an area in ride called Oakfield. Oakfield, yes. Yeah, it used to be called Troublefield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sean, Sean, uh, young Sean says, uh, we have LED street lights. They turn them off at midnight. Yeah, I've heard of some uh, other places actually turning their lights off at midnight now. Yeah, uh, certainly where my mate's pub was, I think all the lights in his street go off at midnight. They just go off. I mean, oh, to be honest, you know, it, it does seem a terrible waste of money to leave all these lights on all night long. And, you know, for what, how many accidents do they actually power. save? Yeah. You know, generally, if you have an accident on a road, it's it's your fault because you're driving too fast or some other idiot's doing it. Mm. You know, you, you can't leave all these lights on burning enormous amounts of electricity all night long, surely. You know, it costs yeah. so much money. It really does. Sean says, also, the phone looked very retro. I've seen DJ microphones like that. No, you mean DJ headphones, not microphones. Uh, I'm looking at it now, actually. It looks like it's made of rubber. It, uh, no, it's not. It does look like rubber. It's plastic. Listen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. You see what? It does look like rubber. It's got what? a nice... It's got a nice... What? It does... What? Chris doesn't look like he's 50. No, well, that's I said a compliment, he looks... I said he looks like he's 33, you... Oh, yeah. thank you, Angel. If I was straight, I'd manage you. I'd marry you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I'm not smoking anymore. 
Oh, that's the best thing you can do. That's I, the best I, thing I, ever, giving up the smoking, Angel. Yeah. Well done, darling. How long has that been for? Nearly a month now. Yeah, good. You carry on. Eventually, the wanting for one will disappear, because I used to smoke 40 a day. It's bad yeah. for you. Yep, I gave up about 25 years ago, so there we are. never touched one since. It does go. It, the urge to have a cigarette does eventually go, my darling. Right? Yeah. I can't. I can't do that. I'll get too much stress. <laughs> oh, you're in stress. Get off those cigarettes. Yeah, get off the Get off the cigarettes. You don't want cancer. Wow. Cancer and heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Do you want you one of those? Have... No. Why? I'm all right at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to talk to you, David. Absolute nice pleasure, talk, sir. Yeah. It's yeah. been a while. Don't be a stranger. If we're still if we're still here or by next Friday, we will call in next Friday. I don't know where Simon is. I've been speaking to Simon quite regularly. Oh, well, his daughter's on with us this morning. She just sent a message in. Shania is with us. Oh, hi, Good morning, Shania. Shania's there. Hey, Say hello to Shania, yeah. Doing uh, that. Was it Ventnerway, isn't it? Yeah, uh, oh, I don't know whereabouts she is. She uh, probably, she'll probably Ventnerway. come back and tell us in a second. Yeah. Good. All right, David. <laughs> nice to talk to you. Hey, Cheerio. You Take you care. Are. Young David on the Isle of Wight there, boys and girls. Always a pleasure to talk to people. It really is. Uh, Sean also says, I just drove drive around with my high beam lights on. Well, I hope you dip them when there are other, other cars coming the other way, Sean. What car have you got now, by the way? Not quite sure what uh, car Sean's got. Don't forget the email address. If you're watching a recording of the programme, please do send in an email. The email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Email here uh, from Rick, who's in Pittsburgh, USA. It's a long time since we've heard from Rick. Uh, Rick says, uh, Dear Chris... After seeing the pictures of you and picnicking at your mum's grave, I have to relate you this story. Yes, because um, on uh, on on my mum's birthday, which is the first of August, uh, my mum died in the year two thousand uh, nine. Oh gosh! Well, she died on the eighteenth of November two thousand. That's it. Um, uh, on my mum's birthday, I go down to her grave, and I take with me a flask of tea and a birthday cake. And I sit there at the grave and I have a little bit of the cake. Well, sometimes up to a third. <laughs> oh, shh, don't tell anyone. That. I have a third of a birthday cake when I go down there. So I have that and uh, a cup of tea. And I sit there chatting away to her. And these people are walking past. I don't care. These people are walking past. And, um, uh, and, and it's all very pleasant. Rick says, it's been a rough time at our church this year. We've seen several funerals and only one wedding this year. In fact... Since the summer has started, we've had five funerals. Oh, that's a lot. What, at your church? Mind you, is that a lot for a church to have five funerals? I don't know. I remember the last time I went to my old church in Roehampton. And when I was a little boy, there'd be weddings every single Saturday there. We might have two or three weddings on a Saturday at the church at St. Joseph's in Roehampton, where I used to go. And the last time I went, I remember the priest standing there and he says, oh, we, ha we had a wedding last year. Just one. One wedding at the church in the whole year. I just don't think people get married in churches anymore. I think it's a great shame. You know, the whole registry office business, um, it, it, you know, it, it's, ju it's just not a wedding. For me, it's not a, a registry office wedding for me is not a wedding. As far as I'm concerned, if you get married in a registry office, you're not really married. I've got to tell you, I was married once, uh, 1983. That was a registry office, and I didn't feel, I, I just didn't feel married. You know, you've got to have the, the whole altar thing and the priest and the, the choir and the organ and all that business, in my opinion. I know there's probably plenty of people watching or listening to the show who got married in a registry office and oh, well, we, we feel married. Yes, I know, and that's probably you, so that's fine, you know. I personally don't feel married unless it's been in a church. Um... Rick says, in January, our deacon had fallen asleep in the Lord uh, from a massive heart attack. His wife and son were, as you can imagine, devastated. It was very rough for her, all during Great Lent and Pascha, which is Easter, 
to those of the Russian and Greek Orthodox Church. Are, are, are you with the Orthodox Church, then? Is that, is that the one you're with? Okay. Uh, usually, the Sunday after Pashka, Pashka, P-A-S-C-H-A, Pasha. See, I've never heard of Pasha. I don't know what that is. We go to cemeteries to bless the graves of our departed loved ones. After blessing the graves at the cemetery, we break out tables, our Pasha baskets, and proceed to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. We do this after every cemetery as well. OK. Uh, getting back to the story, at Deacon Joe's grave, and before we blessed any of the graves, I went over and put a shot glass full of vodka at his gravestone. As we got to bless his grave, the glass, which was full when I left it, was bone dry. His wife had seen me place the first shot down and we looked at her. She started to laugh and smile. She knew he was in a happy place. I wanted to share with that with you after seeing your pictures of your mum uh, your mum's grave and you sitting there uh, from Rick in Pittsburgh. So thanks very much for that, Rick. It's nice to hear from you, sir. Couple of people coming through today. I hear the voices. They're coming through. They're coming through. Speak up, please. Yes, they're coming through. Nice to hear people coming through who I haven't speaking to, spoken to for a long time. It really is, boys and girls. OK. Don't forget, if you want to join us live, uh, just coming up to half past 11. Or if it's half past 11 on Friday the 8th of August 2013 and you're watching or listening to the show you are with us live and you can join in live either by Skype Skype username is all one word Chris Reardon C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N or by phone local London phone number 020 8133 Email as well of course you can <coughs> send in an, an email message, either by typing on the keyboard or an audio message. Oh, God, there's someone at the door. Can you hang on a minute? That's the po that'll be the postman. Back in a second. Do you know my bell, by the way? Stay there now. Hello? 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 So it's only a, only a little cable that I ordered. I do like ordering stuff on the internet, don't you? Amazon's my favourite. You just click one click and it just comes in the post. I love it. I love it. This is just a cable. I know you're wondering what's in here, aren't you? You're desperately wondering what's he ordered. I'm sorry, very boring. A wire. A cable. This is for one of the lights that I use at the karaoke I do in Belushi's in... Um, uh, that's the Camden Town one on a Sunday night. So if you want to come to karaoke, I do three karaoke, four karaoke's this week. On Saturday this week, I'm doing a karaoke at the Laurie Arms, Shepherd's Bush Road in Hammersmith. That's at 9 p.m. till 1 a.m. That's this Saturday, the 10th of August. OK, karaoke at the Laurie Arms, Shepherd's Bush Road, Hammersmith, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m., free entry, and it's a nice place. We actually set up in a conservatory in there. I love it. Love it. Sunday night, Belushi's Karaoke, Camden High Street, Sunday night, 8 p.m. till 12 midnight. And Monday and Wednesday, Karaoke at Belushi's in Borough High Street. That's the London Bridge Branch, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. On Wednesday, you have to pay for that one. I think it's £2 on Wednesday, OK? Um, so that's it. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, some people say... Oh, Shania writes in, uh, I'm in Ventnor. So Shania is indeed uh, in Ventnor, which is like... Is that like the capital... Kind of the capital of the island, isn't it? I think Ventnor. Not quite sure about that. OK. Uh, some people send in little audio messages. And indeed, two people have sent those in this week. And I'm going to play those for you in a minute. Um, all right. Uh, you can send those in as well on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.com. UK. I'm actually not getting any emails this morning. I don't know if that's working. Am I looking in the right place? Not quite sure if the emails are working this morning. Um, 
I know the Facebook thing is, but not maybe not the emails. Why have I got three there? I've got a three written there. It's all very complex. Oh, there we are. One minute. <coughs> oh, there he is. Ryan. Good morning, Ryan. Ryan is in Essex. Am I right? I think I might be right. Is that young Ryan in Essex? Good morning, Ryan. Hang on. Let me check my about thing. Is he in Basildon or somewhere like that? Norway? Are you in Norway? No, Liverpool. Are you all over the place? <laughs> <laughs> is this the right Ryan? Hang on a minute. Is this the guy that does the TV, uh, the radio stuff? Yes, it is, isn't it? Good morning, Ryan. Nice to hear from you, sir. And good morning to um, Mark. Good morning, Mark. How are you, Mark? Nice to hear from you, sir. Uh, and that's it. Good. Mark says we're off air. No, we're not. No, we're not, mate. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Got messages coming through. You must be in the wrong place. <laughs> there we are. I don't, I don't think Mark's paying attention this morning. That's it, Mark. And a uh, couple of messages here from... Uh, Sean again. Oh, he's got a Land Rover Discovery. Oh, my God, they're dear. How much is the tax on that, Sean? Is that about 275 quid? Christ, they're dear to run. I had a Land Rover Defender. I loved it. I loved it. I had three, actually. I bought one, then another one, then another one, you know, as, as, as they got older. I loved my Land Rover Defender, but so expensive to run. I could not justify the money I was spending on it. Not only the fuel, that the maintenance costs were astronomical on that. Absolutely astronomical on, on Land Rovers. So uh, I, I then went over to cars and got the Toyota. This is my second Toyota car. I got Toyota Yaris now that I'm very, very happy with. Really pleased with my little Toyota Yaris. Very economical, gets me from A to B. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Shania says, uh, Newport is the main town on the island. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Ventnor. Sorry, it is indeed uh, Newport. And Ryan is in Liverpool. He's a scouser. Aren't you, Ryan? Yeah, I knew. I, I, I thought, for some reason, I thought he was in Essex. I don't know why. So good morning to you, uh, Ryan. By the way, uh, do feel free to send uh, to share the link to the show on your Facebook walls where we're on air. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. There's not like hundreds of people watching. We're lucky to get to 10 watching the show live. And uh, by far, far more people watch the show recorded. But we're lucky when we're live. I think it might be the time of day, like 10.30 in the morning. Isn't, to be honest, the best time uh, to be sitting here doing a live show. I shouldn't be doing it at night. But as I'm lucky enough to work every night, it's, that's a bit impossible, really. Um, let's say hello to James, um, who's in London, and sends in an email. Um, we're talking about common sense on one of the last shows. And James says, I'm afraid common sense has been lost, I'm afraid. Uh, I believe the suing culture, you know, people suing each other, has a lot to do with it now. Uh, you know, it, it does annoy me when people are suing people left, right and centre for this, that and the other. You know, whatever happened to accidents? Do you know what I mean? You, you, you'd fall over, oh, oh, it was an accident. You know, no, now people seem to... Seem to, and all they want is all they want is the money. That's all it is. People are greedy. You know, I had it at some point. I can't remember what happened. To someone and someone says, "Oh, you can get three thousand pound for that." Three thousand pound for what? I can't even remember what it was now. I think it was just a remark someone said to me. Someone someone said something to me, and I says, "Why? why what? 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 Want three thousand pound for?" Well, he's not allowed to say that. What a load of old twaddle. They're just greedy. Want, want, want money all the time. That's all people bloody well want. Gets on my nerves. We were talking about parking wardens. Um, as for parking wardens, they say they don't make money on it, but they do. As council tax don't rise, so they look for other ways to get money. Oh yeah, I, I do believe that the councils will tell you that they don't make money out of their out of their uh, parking. I, I don't believe a word of it. I think you're liars. I think a lot of the councils lie through their teeth. That's where they make a lot of money from, from parking and all that. They're not allowed to. I know what they will they will stand up in court and say that they don't. Probably come out with all these grafts and figures, but I don't believe you. I think you're liars. 
Where I live on bank holidays, parking is free in the council car parks, but most people still got fines for not displaying a ticket. Well, if it's free, why would they need a ticket? That's just mad. They wonder why people go mad at them for doing this. I also believe this is one of the reasons that the high streets are getting killed off, and that's from James. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. You know, who wants to... Who wants to go down to the shop? I mean, this is why a lot of the um, out-of-town out of shopping centres do so well. Because they have big free car parks. I mean, it's hardly fair, is it, to the shops on the high street? If I can sit here, and I, I, I just told you a little while ago that um, I love ordering stuff from Amazon. Okay? I, I just find what I want, and I go online, and I, I've got this one-click ordering thing set up. I see something, and I compare prices. I, I go around and compare prices, and I just click once, and in two days, two next day or two days later, it just comes in the post. I haven't got to get in my car. I haven't got to look for somewhere to park. I haven't got to pay for parking. And I do believe the, the high street is in terminal decline. I really do. I think it will be a shame. There are times, as you well know, where it's nice to browse. I mean, take for example furniture. I'm sure you can order furniture online. I've never done it myself. But it's nice to go somewhere and, and, and jump on a bed or lay on a bed or sit on the settee that you're about to spend a thousand pounds on, isn't it? So there are some things I, I do believe that you can't really trust to buy online. I mean, then, if if something comes that, and you don't like it or whatever, and often you can send it back, but all that hassle, then you've got to send in a damn thing back and buying another envelope and this, that and the other. It's just hassle. But I do believe the high street is in terminal decline. I think the government was saying the other day, or someone had put forward an idea, that perhaps we need to... Redo some of these abandoned shops as homes. So there's a lot of empty shops. I mean, can you honestly say that some at some point these shops are going to fill up with people other than coffee shops and um, and charity places? I think someone was talking about converting these into homes, which I think is actually not a bad idea because I can't see any any other shops going in them at the moment. Can you? Your thoughts on that, please, on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Rightio, uh, Marge has sent in a few messages on the on the YouTube, actually, which I've uh, managed to pick up this time. Sometimes I miss the messages people leave on YouTube. Always best to send, if you're going to do a typing message, please send it in on the email, OK? Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Oh, Sean just says, uh, for his Land Rover Discovery, it's £250 for the tax yearly, £1,300 for insurance. Well, that's because you're so young. That's so I'm afraid that's how it is. Do you know what my insurance is, Sean? Fully comprehensive, £299. I'm sorry to upset you. That's what mine is, £299. That's what happens when you get to be old. Old now. So it's really cheap. And Sean says it's £40 for a quarter of a tank. A quarter of a tank! Jeez. That's a lot. That's a hell of a lot, isn't it? Quarter of a tank. Blimey. Awful. Oh, thank you, Shania. You shared a link, didn't you, darling? She shared a little link there. Um, okay. That's it. Good. Um... Marge writes in, because the trouble with my feet, you know, I'm going to foot clinic now. I go to foot clinic now, because <laughs> I've got trouble with the feet. Marge says, um, on the subject of your insoles, you still have to make sure for room for your insoles, the doctor said to wear. Yes, I've realised that now, actually, Marge. I've got to say to you, um, when I first had the insoles, I was putting them on top of the other insoles that were already in my feet. I couldn't understand why it was all so tight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realised you have to take out the inside. And I was like that for two days. And my feet were even worse then, of course. 
then I realised you actually have to remove the insoles that come with the trainers and put the insoles that the doctor gave in them instead, and then it works. I actually bought a new pair of trainers this week. £13 from, e from um, eBay. It's not bad, is it? That's with the postage. My nephew went mad, didn't he? It's why are you buying cheap trainers? He's, he's just bought trainers. £90. My nephew's bought trainers. 16 years. 90 quid. And he bought two pairs! 90 quid worth of trainers! Shh. Too much, isn't it? Jeez. Mars also says... Do you let YouTube pick a thumb now when the recordings of your videos get up? Well, yes, I do. I do let YouTube. Can 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 you choose one yourself then? I just assume that's how it was, because YouTube, when when the show goes to YouTube, uh, usually by um, late Friday night, once once we've finished doing the live show, when when the recording goes up for people to watch and listen, um, YouTube chooses a thumbnail. As far as I knew, that's how it was. You know, YouTube chose the thumbnail, that's that's it. I didn't think you could choose your own thumbnail. They give you a choice of three and you just choose one of them, you know. Marge says, did you know there's another Chris Reardon on YouTube? Just search your name. Oh, I do hope not. Is there really? Oh, I don't like the idea of that. Hang on a minute, let's have a quick look. What's he like? He's probably not as good looking and talented as myself, but there we are. We'll have a little look. Hang on. YouTube... Oh, it's Geek Week on YouTube, apparently. I don't know. But Chris Reardon. Hang on a minute. Chris Reardon. Chris Reardon. There's me at the top. There's me. There's me. Oh, one in San Francisco. There's a Chris Reardon in San Francisco. There's another one here. Where's this one? Hang on a minute. Chris Reardon. Where's he? All activities. What is teabagging? Don't know what that is. Doesn't say anything. Oh, about. Let's see about. Is there anything about? There's nothing about him. Joined January last year. No, nothing about him there. Oh, is there any more? Any more Chris Reardon's? How many of them? They're, these, these are these are not real ones though, are they? Oh, someone goes downhill biking with Chris Reardon. All filmed on the iPhone. Oh, there's another one. Another one. Hang on, another one. This one's got glasses on. Oh, there's quite a few, isn't there? Oh. But people won't be able to find me if any more of these blooming Chris Reardon's come on. It's an outrage. That's what it is, an outrage. Uh, on the subject of funerals, Marge says, I never go to funerals or go to graves. For me, that's like visiting your coat that you took off and laid on a chair. They are not there anymore. That's how I feel funerals are for. So, that, yeah, which is fair comment, actually. You're, you're probably right, Marge. You know, people aren't there. They're not still in that box, are they? Their spirit moves on in whatever method, you know, it does. And here's, here's a nice long email from Marge. And then we've got a couple of voice uh, emails to play you. Good day to you, Chris. I decided to write in again this week. Been so darn hot and humid that when I get home, I just crash under the air conditioning and not much else. Well, our weather's quite nice now. The, um, oh, the, what do you call it? The uh, temperature is now quite a nice, it's, it's quite a nice temperature now. I mean, it really is. Not much goes in my life. Um, yours does. So I really have to think hard to come up with something to talk about. I got another four acres of land this week. The neighbour next door sold it to us for $10,000. I thought you were poor. Where'd you get that $10,000 from, Marge? You keeping that stuff under the bed sheets, under the, uh, under the mattress? You got a few, few thousand dollars stuffed under there, haven't you, Marge? Marge is in Oklahoma, USA, by the way. I can't wait till cooler weather so we can start working on it. It has more trees on it but then, than the other 10 acres I live on. Actually, only three acres of mine is is mine. My brother and mother only other, but it will always stay in the family at least. What do you do for hobbies when you're not working at karaoke besides biking? Do you do anything at home? What I mean is, if you had a place to do things like woodwork or such, no. I have no interest at all in woodwork or metalwork or anything like that. Um, I do enjoy gardening, Marge. 
I like to be in my garden doing that. I don't like to be um, painting, decorating. None of that interests me at all. I mean, it really doesn't. Uh, I try and watch a bit of television. There never seems to be much time to watch the television. The garden, I like doing the garden. Um, what other hobbies? Well, you could say this is a hobby, couldn't you? That's what Ronnie says. This is this is my hobby show. Hobby radio. You've got hobby radio. Hobby radio. Da 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 da. Hobby radio. <laughs> Dear. You're not into bowling or do in uh, many in the UK bowl. Yeah, people go bowling. No, I'm not into that at all, no. What about football? I think it's like what we call soccer. Do they have anything like our football here in the UK? Um, well, I, I think American football is more like rugby over here. But football, I have absolutely no interest in that whatsoever. I never have done. My dad was really into football. He sported Queen's Park Rangers. Um, I have no interest in football whatsoever. Absolutely none. If I, if I would go as far as I hate the game. Overplayed people running around on a football pitch... Idiots fighting at football match and getting drunk. Oh, it's not my cup of tea at all. Some men are super nuts extreme, sports nuts extreme. When you're not dreaming of Barry Manilow, just curious and what other artistic or fanciful talents or hobbies you have. Well, I like Shirley Bassey. Um, and I do like Barry Manilow. In fact, um, it's all been happening in Barry Manilow world this week. Uh, he stopped doing his shows for this year. There's no more Barry Manilow shows this year, but he's doing one in January. And I don't know where to go. I, I was thinking about this all last night. I can get a front row ticket. It's in Fort Lauderdale in Florida in January, where I gather the weather's pretty reasonable at that time over there. It's like 70 degrees or so. And I am tempted. I don't know whether I should do it or not. Don't know whether I don't, don't know whether I, it's travelling, you see. I can't stand the travelling. You know, I'll, I'll get the nice seat on the plane, but um, I, I don't know if I can be bothered to travel there or not. Although I'd love to see him, you know, as many times as possible, really. When I watched one of your older videos, you were talking with your niece, Tracy, and just had the studio redone. Is it the same place you have it now? Because it did not look the same. Yes, we are in this. I think we're in the same place now. Was she in this? Yes, yes, it's exactly the same place. I must say you ragged on Tracy a bit, and that was a bit of fun, but poor Tracy just sat there and took it. It's all fun, Marge. You just don't get the sense of humour sometimes, dear. I notice sometimes when I put little things on the Facebook, and you seem almost offended by the stuff I put on there. It's all a bit of fun, Marge. The sense of humour is difficult. I'm afraid you just don't get it sometimes, do you? Um... Uh, I would be glad if anyone came to visit me and not fussed if they've left lights on or not because no one comes to see me, boo-hoo. <laughs> oh, Marge. Get another cat. That's it. That's the answer. Get another cat. <laughs> oh, no, I can't stand things being wasted. I really hate things being wasted, whether it be food, electricity, water or anything like that. I really hate stuff being wasted. Marge says I'm actually the same, however, when it comes to lights on. I get frustrated when I work for people and clean the house and when I go in. Lights are on everywhere or they leave their charges in the wall. That really irks me. Yes! Yes! It's, it's, it's dreadful. There's so many people like that. They moan about their electricity bill. Mine's just come down again. My com I'm very, very careful with electricity and gas use. In fact... Let me tell you, boys and girls, my electricity bill has now, electricity, combined electricity and gas, has now come down from £50 to £43 a month. I'm not complaining about that. See? You can make savings. But you've got to use your common sense. Don't leave things on. I turn the wireless router off, off when I'm not using it. Like, after the show's finished today, I'll turn it off. Why, lay it, why leave it on? I mean, it only uses a little bit of electricity, people say. Yeah, but a little bit there, a little bit there. It all adds up, dear. All adds up. Good morning to John. Morning, John in Croydon. Morning, John, who says, I see Marge is off. Oh, she's off on one again, dear. She doesn't get the English sense of humour, do you, Marge? But we still love you. We still love you. What is your worst pet peeve? I mean, what is it that someone really gets on your nerves? Wasting stuff. 
I hate stuff being wasted. I really do. I don't like food being wasted. I think that's my worst pet peeve. Marge says, if you saw someone abusing an animal in front of you, what would you do? Not severely, but even like hitting a dog or something. This actually happened to me last week. You can read about it on my Facebook page. Um, don't know. Don't know, I've never seen, never seen it happening in front of me, Marge. Does your house have an attic or just two storeys? Uh, it has a, a loft, which is it's like a low attic. You couldn't stand up in there. You know, you couldn't live in, in a loft. But you've got just a, a bit of room up there to store things. You know, So once you've done it, just put it up in the attic and it gets forgotten about. Some people have found some wonderful things in their attics, don't they? Yes. Lots of things. She says, enough of the 20 questions. I'll leave it at that. If I'm not too tired and wake up on Friday, I will try and chat soon. I wish you did your show on Saturday or Sunday, my time. Then I would not have to go back to sleep or go back to work. But I know you have to work uh, on it at that time, and uh, uh, so that's how it is. Well, that's it. Mine's a blank. So till next time, your online friend, Marge. Thank you, Marge. Nice to hear from you, my darling. Yes, uh, it would be a better thing to do the show at night. You know, I mean, it really would. But unfortunately, you know, this is this is that's the time I go to work and um, and that's it. All right, then uh, we've got a couple of audio messages uh, to play for you this morning. The first of which uh, comes from Ian Duff, who's in Canada, USA. So let's uh, hear what uh, young Ian's got to say to us uh, on this Tuesday morning. A little MP3 messages coming through. Two of these, actually. There's another one coming up very shortly. Right? So here's the one uh, from young Ian. I'm giving you a little uh, voicemail, Chris, so to make you feel better there. There's nothing sadder than an Englishman with bad feet sitting by the computer waiting for email to come in. I feel your pain, guy. Uh, this morning here, it is, uh, first of all, to let your listeners know if you plan to broadcast this. I'm in Ottawa, Canada, and my first memory of the day was my daughter's uh, cat coming on to the bed at 5 a.m. to wake me up. All you see is uh, this little cat, Abby, weighs about three pounds and has big, big eyes, disproportionate to the uh, size of the uh, head. I think she'll grow into her eyes and her feet eventually. So she got me up this morning and then I uh, did some mundane laundry and then now I'm out at the uh, mall uh, getting some Tim Hortons coffee and one of their delightful uh, oatmeal and raisin cookies. I also listened to the podcast of uh, Richard Vobes. I don't know if you know him, Chris, but he's uh, he's a friend of Paul Edwards and myself. He goes by the name of Bald Explorer on his uh, video podcast, and he goes by the name of Naked Englishman in his podcast. And right now, uh, two days ago, his son, 18 years old, had a brain aneurysm and uh, Richard has been going back and forth to the hospital uh, frantic with worry of course uh, that there won't be any more bleeding on the brain so uh, we're hoping the best for uh, his son Billy uh, so I think I'll end this here Chris and uh I hope that you don't need injections in your feet. Uh, it sounds like something that I wouldn't enjoy myself. But at the same time, if you're going to be tripping the light fantastic there, you're going to need uh, your twinkle toes to be in good shape. So have a good week, and uh, thanks for your podcast. I, I'm one of the few listeners, I guess, that go past the 15-minute mark and uh, listen to the whole production. So, ciao for now. 
There we are, young Ian in uh, Canada, who sends us uh, that message in there. Thank you very much, Ian. That is, uh, and and um, I do hope uh, Richard's um, son was it Billy? Was it Billy, his son, who's brain aneurysm? That sounds uh, pretty serious there. So, um, uh, our thoughts go out to Richard. Uh, Richard Vobes, I hope his son uh, gets better there. Uh, yes, Richard Vobes, he does a podcast, he's been doing it for quite some time, same as myself. Uh, he's got a lot more uh, viewers than me, but there they are. Most people have, I'm afraid. Most people have. Um, nice to hear that you listen to the whole show, Ian. And you are one of the few that go past the 15 minutes. Most people actually only listen to the first 15 minutes of the show so if you're still with us thank you it, it is appreciated all right uh, it, it has been mentioned to me by other podcasters and youtubers on more than one occasion that i should only be doing 15 minutes anything else is pointless uh, because people just don't um uh, listen past past that 15 minute point i don't know why um you kind of wonder why, what, presumably these people come back next week and listen to another 15 minutes. But, uh, but that, you know, that that's up to them, you know, if, if people just listen to 15 minutes and maybe I should just be doing 15 minute shows. I did do it once. I found it incredibly difficult, actually, to do all I wanted to do in 15 minutes. But there you go. You know, you have to remember, although we do the video, this is mainly an audio show. And you're, you're better off, perhaps, to, to just download the audio and play it in your car. You know, as like a friend. You know, when you're on these long journeys and you just plug in your, 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 your MP3 player or something like that, and off, off you go. And you've got a friend on the end there. So thanks for that, Ian. I'm glad you're one of the few that stay. I wonder, will you do me a favour, boys and girls? OK? If you're still with us at this point today, please send me an email and let me know. OK? Just send me an email saying, actually, I listen to the whole show. Just just so I know. And we'll have a little look at that next week to see how many people actually stay for the whole show. Which today is going to be about an hour and 40 minutes. So we've got a long one today. All right. Uh, one more little um, audio message. Uh, this one comes from Ross Patzelt in Norwich in Norfolk. Here we go. Here's Ross. Is it working? Hold on. Is it working? Hold on. Put my microphone. Uh, hello, Chrissy. We'll see. It's uh, Ross Patzelt here. I just thought I'd leave you a message. If you want to play this out on your on your um, <clears throat> your geek cast, you can do. I done something quite interesting yesterday, and I'm not going to admit this on Facebook because um, a man should know stuff like this. But yesterday, I went on a vehicle maintenance course. Now, have you ever heard of one of these? I'll tell you what they are then. A vehicle maintenance course is for people like me who are a bit rubbish with cars, and I think yourself as well. I don't think you're very good with cars, are you? from what I've, I've heard before. Uh, anyway, so what you do, uh, about six months ago, we broke down in the middle of nowhere, and I did not know how to change a tyre. Now, it's meant to be a man's job in the world to, for the man to do the manly things like change a tyre. I did not know how to change a tyre. I had to ask my friend Michael to help me, and I felt a bit of an idiot that I couldn't change a tyre. So I put, took, a, took it up on myself when I saw a deal on the Groupon website, which is... Um, for a vehicle maintenance course, which basically consists of showing you how uh, the basics of, a, of a, a motor vehicle works. So, aka, your lights, make sure your lights work. We all know how to do that. Make sure your indicators work properly all round. We know how to do that. Check your oil. We all know how to do that. Check your uh, brake fluid and brake your, check your power steering fluid. I know how to do that already because I have to do that all the time. Uh, under the bonnet checks are lovely. But the big one I wanted to learn last night with this nice man in the garage was how to change a tyre. And I was there for one hour, and he taught me how to change a tyre. Um, and it's not as easy as some people think, because there's all different places in cars where the tyres are kept. Uh, and mine is underneath, right underneath the, um, the bonnet, uh, well, the bonnet, the, uh, the boot of the car. It's hard to get to. It's dark, because underneath, uh, I learned how to do it. I learned how to... Um, unscrew it the correct way because obviously there's different ways to unscrew and re-screw making sure you're doing it in diagonal order when you're screwing it up um how to safely park your vehicle you always make sure it's in first gear on level ground but then if you're in the middle of the countryside sometimes you can't do that so you have to kind of think on your feet 
And I thought that would be quite interesting for you, maybe. I didn't know if you were thinking about doing something like this, uh, learning the basics of a vehicle. Seeing as you drive around, going to your gigs all the time, um, I, I've never heard you say that you're very good with vehicles, and I'm not either. But that does, you know, that cost me £21 to do, the, to do this one-hour course. And I think that was probably the best £21 I've ever spent, because if you ever get stuck somewhere and you're out in the sticks, you know, and you've got no phone signal, the last thing you want to be doing is walking miles to a phone box, isn't it? Or trying to change the tyre yourself when you don't know what you're doing, because you can make the car worse, you know, because there's certain places where you put the jack. And that's the thing. Where are all these tools in the car? I didn't even know where half this stuff was stored. And this m nice man last night, <coughs> last night found it in the car for me and showed me how to do it. So a vehicle maintenance course. Have you been on one, Chris? Have your listeners been on one? Uh, they're very good. They're normally for women. But as I said, um, I went on one last night. And now I feel a little bit more confident if we broke down. I know you shouldn't talk stuff like that up because it's very, very rare that, you know, cars break down anyway. But you can be unfortunate like we were six months ago, driving down the road, and then there was a nail that was on the road. Oh, God knows what the nails are doing on the road, but there was a nail on the road, and that gave us a puncture. 30 seconds later, we could see the smoke coming out of the tyre, and I had to abandon the vehicle and uh, go and get help. And I didn't feel very good doing that. So, uh, yeah, I think maybe we all should have a go at a vehicle maintenance course. Let me know what you think, Chris. Because uh, I think that um, because you do, like I said, you do a lot of driving, I think that could really be fun beneficial to you. I mean, you might already know. You might be very handy with, a, with a, a car. But like I said, I've never heard you say that you've, um, well, you've probably been quite lucky to not to break down. But uh, a puncture on a tyre is quite a, you know, that can happen to anyone at any time. And it's always handy to know, to know how to change a tyre. So that's it, Chris, just to say, I love the show. Uh, I hope you play this out. And I'm hoping to join you one Friday morning when I can um, actually uh, tune in and listen live and, you know, give you a little phone call. But as you know, I work quite a lot of hours at the moment, as we've got the two little ones now. Uh, and I'm always at work getting the money in, just like yourself. So I will speak to you very soon, Chris. Love the show. Goodbye. Thank you, Ross. There we are. Nice of him to send a little message in there. Um, my car has broken down a couple of times, and I've also once had to change a, a tyre on a couple of occasions. Uh, I have told one particular story of that a while ago. Um, I, I won't tell you that. Let's, I'm going to save that for next um, Friday, OK? My, um, my tyre changing story. I should just circle that there, because uh, we're getting a little bit late now, boys and girls. Um... Vehicle maintenance course. He said normally for women. Well, that would have suited you down to the ground then, Ross, wouldn't it? Normally for women. I mean, that would be no good for me, being a proper man as I am. You know, but if it, you know, I, I can't believe you couldn't change a tyre. I could change a tyre. I've changed a tyre on a Land Rover, mate. That is changing a tyre. That is bloody hard work, that is. Dear, dear me. Can't change a tyre. Honestly, but car maintenance course, yeah, pretty good. I can change the oil, uh, brake fluid. You check check all that stuff. I can check all that. Um, what I can't do is change brakes. I'd like to be able to change the brakes on my car. Don't know how easy that would be. I'd li I'd like to learn how to do that. But actually, Ross, at the end of the day, uh, my car goes in for a service every ten thousand miles, and it does go in. You know, I don't muck about with the car uh, because it, it needs to be reliable. If I can't get to work, then that, that's pretty pretty um, uh, serious because there's kind of rarely you can't get anyone at the last minute to do what I do. Um, so so I need to get around from A to B. That's why I change the car every couple of years. Is it every three years? I must have a reliable car because um, if I can't get somewhere, that's that. as I say, that is quite serious. Um... So thank you very much for that. You 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 send those messages. In. We we like an MP3 message, Ross. Very kind because you sent one last week as well. Um, I wouldn't bother sending little videos in because I, I, for some reason I can't get those to work on here. I'm very pleased to see Mark has managed to join us at the end of the show there because we're all about to finish. I'm afraid, Mark. And he says, "Sounds good." Laying in bed, can't walk. I've got a, can't walk. I've got a big bruise on my foot. Oh, you poor thing! How did you get that then? A bruise on your foot, Mark? Dear me, you'll have to be wheeled into the karaoke this Sunday in uh, Camden Town, won't you? 
You'll have to borrow a wheelchair or something like that. And uh, I'm very pleased to say that Richard in Croydon is with us for the whole show. He actually stays for the whole show. Thank you, Richard. I'm pleased to hear that. Ryan says he feels like I want to be listening to the Raymonds, been listening to classic rock all day. Oh, we like classic rock. We actually quite like um, classic rock. I remember the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and all that. They used to bring out these records um, and they'd have pop tunes that they'd kind of classified, if you see what I mean. You know? Anyway, time for me to go, boys and girls. Uh, nice to see a new Doctor Who. We've got a new Doctor Who who's over 50 years old. And I'm, I don't know what it is. The last two Doctors, I wasn't keen on David Tennant. I'm sorry. And Matt Smith, I thought he overacted. He was too young. And he overacted a lot. Both of them. David Tennant and um, Matt Smith, for me, were not good doctors. I know they were very popular with everyone else. They weren't for me. This one, I think, is more like a Doctor Who. What do you think? Send it in on the email. I'll read it out next Friday, OK? Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk is my email address. Don't forget, you can also watch recordings of this show. Uh, you can either subscribe on YouTube. My YouTube, my YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK. So youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Find that and just click on the uh, subscribe button. You can subscribe on iTunes. iTunes for iTunes. Go to the iTunes uh, store on the podcast section. Type in United Kingdom Talk. You'll give the option of downloading the audio or the video version. All right. Or uh, you can go to the main United Kingdom Talk website to get the audio only show or indeed watch a show. And that's at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Mark says, I've got crutches anyway. I really couldn't walk on Wednesday night, you poor thing. You're going to have to borrow a wheelchair so you can carry on singing and do what you love. That's what I say. Time to go, boys and girls. Thanks very much for watching and listening to the show today. I'll see you again live here next Friday at uh, 10.30 UK time. All right? You have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching this. Bye-bye now.